It's March, and if you're a sports fan, that means one thing. Popcorn. No. Peanuts. Well, yeah, I guess in a sense it hot means dogs. it means March Madness, the, and all those things, popcorn, peanuts, and hot dogs, and beer you can get at basketball games in March Madness. Um, and of course, March Madness means the college men's basketball championship tournament that's been going on for the last week, and it's going to continue into early April when the champion is going to be crowned. Personally, Dirk, I'm pulling for you, John Dog. You probably heard of them, <laughs> Loyola. Loyola of Chicago, led by the team's chaplain, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 98-year-old Sister Jean Sister Dolores Jean. Schmidt. Sister Jean. The Ramblers won their game last night. I don't know if you know that. They That's reached right. the Elite Eight. Prayer works. It's been an incredible story. <laughs> I, they're a real underdog, so if they can win, any of us out there can win. Right. Well, in honor of March Madness and the millions of office pools causing untold hours of wasted time at businesses from sea to sign at Shining Sea, we recently ran the article, The Math Behind the Perfect Free Throw, by Larry Silverberg, and it originally appeared on the Conversation blog earlier this month. And we republished the piece in the Quality Digest newsletter on Monday. Now, Silverberg is a professor, professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at the noted basketball school, North Carolina State University. Sadly, the Wolfpack were bounced. <laughs> they did their bounce Bounces. basketball? Nice. Yeah, there you go. Bounced in the first round of the tournament this year, but that doesn't mean that Silverberg and his colleague, Chow Tran, don't have something to contribute to the game. Uh, and that something came from millions of simulations of free throws, those uncontested little shots, you know, mm -hmm. these are from 15 feet away, yep. um, that count for one point, okay? Now, many times, good free throw shooting can make the difference between a win for a team and a loss. A, a poor shooting percentage for free throws is 60%, and a good one is like 80%. So, you know, over the course of, you know, 30, 20 or so free throws in a game, it's several yeah. points, right? Yeah. It can really make the difference. Um, between who wins and who loses. Now, if you want to see a mathematical visualization or you want to see a graphic about how a mathematician visualizes free throws, I want you to take a quick gander at this graphic. Christopher, if you can show that one right there, let people see it. I, I think they can see that, hopefully. Oh, we can see on screen. You can yeah. see on screen, okay, good. Well, that's how a mathematician sees <laughs> the free throw with the spin, and there it is. You spin, the angle, the, the hoop, all the backboard, all that kind of stuff. Now. Over the past several years, Silverberg and Tran studied millions of simulated free throws, and they came to realize that the key difference was in trajectory, okay. the angle, the angle of launch, essentially. Sure. A consistent trajectory will lead to more shots falling into the hoop than ones that were either too high or too flat. Uh, Silverberg and Tran ultimately determined that a launch angle of 52%, not that 53, was, that was not 53, <laughs> not 51, 52% was the best angle to release from. Uh, a higher point off the floor also correlates with more success. So a higher point of release off the floor okay. correlates with more success too. Now, you would think that would mean that taller players, right, guys that are seven foot would do better than guys that are six foot in terms of making free throws they are a foot yeah. higher. But that's not true. And, and they're not exactly sure why that is. Okay. <clears throat> they postulate that uh, possibly it's that shorter guys just practice their free throws more. <laughs> that that could be they just practice the free throws more because they yeah. can't slam dunk. Right, right. You know, it's like right. you can't get your points for your slam dunk, so you're going to practice your free throws, or you can score from if you get fouled. That makes, makes some sense. I don't know, but they don't know exactly why the right. the, the shorter guys are, are better. Um, what Silverberg doesn't mention in this piece is NBA legend Rick Barry who retired with a 90% oh, lifetime wow. <laughs> shooting percentage for his free throws. What's interesting about that is how Barry shot his free throws. So do you care to wager a guess as to what Rick Barry's free throw shooting style was, Dirk? He closed his eyes? No. Nope. He did not close his <laughs> eyes. Do you, have, you probably won't get it. Granny? He did it granny <laughs> style. You're kidding. <laughs> Rick Barry shot, and that's exactly what they call it, granny style, <laughs> granny un style. underhand, oh, right. and he just kind of did a, and apparently, I used to shoot. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't say that in the piece, but I've read about this, that it actually is the most consistent way to get the trajectory that you need to hit huh. free throws. The problem is, Guys are embarrassed. By it. <laughs> That's exactly the truth. People are embarrassed. <laughs> NBA big burly athletes don't want to go girl. there and <laughs> you throw like your granny. So that's 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 the story. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's man. the story about free throws for March Madness. Go Loyola of Chicago and and and, and sister. It's, re it's related to quality somehow. <laughs> there All you right. Go.